Hello and welcome back everybody. I'm Necromanticer, and as you can see, Phoenix is back up and running. He's got his new laptop in to replace the old one that's broken down, and he managed to get quite a lot of things up and running, as well as he mentions that the workshop actually has some prisoners working in it now, as well as he did, redid some of the guard deployments, so I've got a, quite a lot to take in. Uh, it would seem that we're running a bit low on cleaning staff, so we're going to want to change that up, see if we can get any more prisoners set up. Oh, that's in logistics now. really do like this new patch. Oh my goodness, we only have three working on that? Let's set the max allowance of janitors, and we can use a few more chefs as always. We have nobody working in the laundry. What is wrong with this picture? And let's just set as many as possible because they won't actually fill the jobs until we have qualified prisoners, so that's fine. It's just dandy. Once we have that set up, they'll actually start working there with a bit more regularity, I suppose. And speaking of regularity, it's time to normalize the deployment. During the night shift, we only need eyes on the prison, mainly the cell blocks, but I think that we can actually get rid of the eyes in the larger areas and just leave people in the cell blocks. No, oh, in the cell blocks, because I would like to have as many people as possible available for shakedowns. And during normal hours, we only need eyes places. We don't actually need to have any centralized force of guards, since we want people to be able to respond at a moment's notice. During work time, we're going to want people in the workshop and the kitchen, since that's where most of our prisoners are going to be actually staying about, and just a nice contingent of guards able to react. And during meal times, we're just going to want to flood the canteen with guards, because that could be a real issue. Another issue is our dog patrols. Right now we have them searching the kitchen and visitors just day in, day out. That's what they do 24-7 if they have time. However, that's not really what I want them to be doing. What I want them to be doing, if they have the time, at least at night, is to first off, patrol the prison and search for any sort of tunnels that are being dug, because that is going to be something that I want to shut down right away. So during the night time, they're going to take these two patrols and any tunnels that are underneath them as they're patrolling, they will trigger on and search around for a few more and let me know that something's going wrong. So I want that to be set up for us. During the free time, we don't actually need them in the kitchen or visitation, searching the visitors. Instead, we can set one of them to be going through the yard and, oh, we do actually need one searching visitation, ignore me. <laughs> During work time, however, we don't need one in visitation. They can be in the kitchen and we're going to want them searching all the working prisoners as well, so set that up. During meal time, both of them need, 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 need to be searching through this canteen here because we do not want there to be any sort of contraband problems or weapon problems in the canteen during lunchtime. That would be disastrous. And is that all set up nicely? Yeah, we've got this dog. We've got the yard and canteen. We've got the nice schedules all set up for the patrols, which is beautiful. Yeah, I think that's about right. Is that a separate? Yes, it is. Okay. I think that's about right for all of our deployments. And we have enough people to shake them down, which we're going to want to do because it's the middle of the night. We'll catch anyone who's tunneling. And I had a look-see, and our supply for contraband is kind of pretty bad, as well as the demand is just absolutely crazy for these sort of luxury type items rather than weapons, which was going up as well, which is a big problem because the more weapons you have, the higher chance of an outbreak actually happening and really terrible, oh my, really terrible things happening to your prisoner. We have a problem with the laundry system. It would seem that we don't have enough machines or ironing boards to fill the need here, so let's add these two in, and I think that's probably going to be what I convert this old holding cell into, is a regular old uh, laundry. That sounds like the best idea. 
We can get rid of these doors and use those to fill in the gaps. We don't need an actual jail doors over here. We can start placing those over in these cells, but I don't want to do that just yet because the moment they become operational, we're going to have prisoners actually going over and filling those, which is going to be a problem right now since there's no shower set up. These guys can kind of squeeze into this shower with them, but we're going to want a lot more money before we do anything with this extra cell block setup that we have. And in order to get us in the right direction, I'm just going to start tossing down a few doors over here. And there's some doors that need placement over here as well, if I'm to turn this into... Oh, this is still a wall. Let's fix that. But there's some doors over here that need placing if we're going to turn this into a block as well. Speaking of our placing things around to make a new cell block, we're running into big money problems, which makes sense because, quite honestly, our cash flow is rather dismal, and most of it's coming from our pitiful exports. Speaking of our pitiful exports, we need more workers to begin the safety induction because only eight of them actually managed to pass that, which is absolutely terrible since that's that's really not a lot. We need people working all 14 of these machines if we're going to get our income up to a reasonable level. And if that's not happening, we need to make it happen. Dismantle objects. Time to cut down some trees and make sure that we get a little cash bonus. Now let's make sure there are no trees outside the prison. Those just kind of annoy me. Are there any up here? No, this guy... This guy, and this guy, and why did... How is that even there? It looks like it's in the middle of the fence, and I think it actually is, but no matter. We can just demolish all those. We'll get the logs for that, and my prisoners can start turning that into wood. Speaking of wood, we're kind of empty of grants. We've got two taken up that are not going to be completed anytime soon, but they will be sort of in the future-ish. The long-term investment is coming along nicely, which is absolutely fantastic to see. That one can take a while, and we're really going to want that set up. Oh, it seems that once I redivided those areas, they lost their guard deployment, so let's push that on through. Okay, is there anywhere else that needs it? I don't think so. Instead, we're going to want to look at what new grants we can sort of take in to fill our last grant slot. The three options that we have are uh, some of the long-lasting options. There's the inmate nutrition research, which doesn't have any necessary requirements. Like, it doesn't require any sort of investment, but it requires a lot of micromanagement, so I like to take that somewhat last. The carpentry apprenticeship means that we need to start making carpenter benches and using the wood in order to turn it into planks, which are then turned into actual beds, but that can be a really long process. And because we're still cutting down forests to turn into a sort of cash, but ooh, our needs are getting a little bit out of hand. Let's see, let's see what's going on with that. Uh, food, which will be taken care of shortly, and just general needs. So did they just wake up? Yeah, they're still in their first little work setup before their first meal of the day, and though it looks like we're in a bit dangerous of a position, people are really frustrated. I think it's because of the nightly shakeup that happened. They've been tearing apart this shower. That's not good. We're going to have to spend money on repairs for that. But I think we can make it so long as we maintain a strong guard presence, which, as you can see, already made sure that this guy wasn't too revolting. I do want to get a doctor over there to heal him up since leaving him injured is going to be a black mark against our prison's health reform sort of setup. But that's taken care of quite quickly. Everyone's going about their day. They're getting fed. They are making a mess everywhere, but there's not much I can do about that without making a set of restrooms, which is probably going to take too much investment at this point. So what I want to focus on is the grants. The Carpentry grant isn't a good idea because, like I was saying, it takes up this wood and turns it into an actual resource. So instead of just exporting this wood, 
it, uh, the workers are going to stockpile it and hold it over until it can be converted into beds, which would really slow down the exports right now, which is not something I want. And finally, there's the education reform, which is honestly the longest lasting grant there is, just because the having five prisoners pass the general ed course takes ages. I'm talking ages. It's They first have to pass the foundation education, which takes a while, and then they have to go through the GE, which just takes forever. It's ridiculous, and I mean, it makes sense, but the time that it takes is so exorbitant that it takes up a grant slot for almost the entire time. So those are our options, and quite honestly, they're rather rubbish options, but I think that since these two grants are going to be completed just on their own in time, I think we go for the long game and pick up education reform because it has the largest advance payment. The carpentry I don't want because I would like to make sure that I have the highest income from this workshop as possible right now, and the inmate nutrition requires way too much micromanagement to be really viable right now, so it seems that we just go with the most- oh no! Where, where'd the death happen? Where was the fight? Why did this happen to me? I don't even have eyes on it. Let's see if we can get him to... Ugh. Now, bollocks. Check out the shower. Was it a problem with the shower? No. Where was the fight? What happened here? It was in the common room. Uh, do we not have a guard station there during regular hours? We don't. Let's make sure that's amended because we really want to have guards anywhere that our prisoners are going to be. And there's also a second common room. I don't need to place guards into the yard because they kind of default to patrolling there during their day-to-day -day times. But, you know, it'd be nice to have a guard in the yard nonetheless. So let's just make sure that we've got guards pretty much everywhere except for the showers. We can hear those, and there's already a guard stationed in every cell block. <clears throat> so they can quickly come in to intervene in those situations. Our workshop is working rather nicely. Let's see what the programs are. We can stop those two. There's more interested in the workshop, so let's set up another class. We only got nine. That means only one out of the last class actually managed to pass, which is terrible. One third of our people actually managing to become workers is absolutely dreadful, especially because this workshop is going to be really important to us getting exports and a reasonable cash flow, especially since we just had an incident and lost all that extra income. Luckily, we do have a nice set of prisoners incoming. We have the room for it since there's only going to be one left without a direct cell, and they can easily take up this holding cell. It seems we have a problem with the utilities. Let's have a look-see. Oh, I see what it is. It was just an issue with the plus sign pattern that really doesn't work in Prisoner Architect. Whenever you have walls on either on all sides of a square, the workers can't actually place a utility under there because they have no way to access that square. So as long as you don't set it up like that and you, we just run these small pipes up and down, we're going to promptly avoid that problem. And is that everything kind of under wraps. We have the laundry expanded. We're fixing the utilities. We've got a bit of an issue with this canteen kind of being overstuffed, but I think that there's enough tables if everyone has enough food, which seems to be an issue. Is there... Do we not have enough cooks? What's going on with this? Cooks. We've got four cooks and plenty of prisoners working in there, right? Yeah, we've got, we've got 16, okay, there's a total of 16 people qualified to work there. We can make all the food we need. Do we need to actually expand the actual supplies? I think we might, so let's start getting a few more cookers involved and a few more fridges, and we'll also set up a, another sink to go along with all that. I like keeping it to that very nice... Oh my god, we have a drug problem as well. Two overdoses at the same time. Come on, guards. 
pick them up and throw them into the infirmary, get them all fixed up, because we don't want anybody to be dying from an overdose. That would be another black mark, and reset our days without instant again, which is terrible. That doesn't have utilities, so we can build just a single pipe on over to that, which will get it fixed up. These guys all do, because they're mooching off of the line created by these other cooking utensils, which is really nice. We've got our guard sort of managing these doors. It sucks that we have to have someone stationed there just because of the airlock problem, but it works out. And we do have a guard stationed here to take care of both of the road gates if they're causing a backup. Oh dear. Um, adding in those extra utilities put a real strain on our main power supply, so I think what I'm going to do is take away a capacitor from this one and move it on over so that we have a bit of a broader uh, sort of supply in backup just in case we want to do anything extra with the prison. And we've got a nice income from the exports. We almost doubled the amount of exports we had from last time, which is great. But we really are worried about this power station supply. We have the extra capacitor to toss right in there, which works out. And we're still waiting on this to become set up as an actual cell block. So first off, I'm going to set up the shower, which I can't just clone over because it is a sort of mirrored version of the showers that I've already set up. Because these showers have the large line on the bottom. Whereas the showers that are going to be on this side of the prison have the large line of shower heads on top, which means that I can't just abuse the clone functionality to set that all up for me. And instead I need to create this as a template for the future of those. I do, however, need to bring the utilities on up to manage all this, and I can start setting up some beds and cell doors after the fact and then those cells will finally be deemed usable and we can make sure that these eight prisoners have their own new cell block to use and we don't even have to worry about digging into our holding cell capacity just yet because that would be a little bit dicey but not too big of an issue I think this is all set up nicely it's time to get the beds going. All eight of those. Really expensive, but well worth the price since each prisoner gives you a hundred dollars a day minus their oh minus their cost of living, which is the canteen. The let's see, I think it's in policy. There we go. Right now we're feeding them medium meals of medium variety which costs $12 a day per prisoner. So each prisoner is essentially worth $88 per day, I believe. Yeah, that works out. And so bringing in extra prisoners quickly pays off the cell in just a matter of days since it requires a $500 investment. And most of that is taken care of via grants. Each one gives you about 3,000 total, which for $500, let's see that's 10 each grant is worth about 60 prison cells at least for the startup cost and all of that then becomes pure income what it doesn't account for is foundations and walls but that's not too big of an issue especially if you're building in bulk like I am with these large sets of cell blocks so that works out nicely oh where what is going on where was this death was this in the showers? It was probably in the showers, wasn't it? Well, let's have a look-see. Yes, yeah, so it would seem via the damages that it was a little bit of an incident here in this. Oh my goodness! He just killed a... What is going on here? This guy is friggin' deadly! He just killed one of our guards! Oh my goodness! What on earth? This guy is volatile and deadly. Oh my goodness. I'm reassigning him to Supermax. Just so that I can keep an eye on him and keep track of what he's doing. Because this guy is... 
This guy's scary. Let me see, how long... Do, oh my god. We've got him for another 40 years. <laughs> that... Uh, that's not good. I'm gonna be honest. This guy is going to be a problem in the future. What's his name? Wait for him to slow down, just so I can check. Adam Kenway. That is a name to be feared. And just so that I can sort of hopefully crack down on this. First off, I want to set up the shower up here so that when I eventually start cloning that over, when we expand the cell blocks this way, that can have the room designation already there. But I'm also going to want to lock all of these doors open so that we have vision inside. Does that work? I don't actually think it does. Oh well. Locking them open so that... Wait a minute, do we even need doors there? I don't think we do. I think we can change up the way our prison is set up ever so slightly and just get rid of the doors on the showers to make sure that our guards have vision and can interrupt fights like that, which oh, is heartbreaking because not only do we have to deal with that prisoner for a long time to come, you, Adam Kenway, you are the problem, but we're also going to have to make a few adjustments just to make sure incidents like that don't ever happen again. I just want to make sure that keeps the proper deployment. It does. It does keep the proper deployment, so that's not to worry. But, ugh. That is frustrating. Oh, goodness. 30 prisoners arriving? We need to shut that off right now. We do not have the space for that. At max, we could hold 20 with the 8 capacity and 12 in the holding cell with beds. But 30 is just way, way too much. But that's going to be it for today. I think we've got our prison in a nice place. We've got a little bit of money to deal with a little bit of expansion. We didn't set up a whole lot. It was more a bit of maintenance, but I think that it's coming together quite nicely. Let me just have one last check at the programs. Yep, we have a whole new set of prisoners to stop that. I want as many... Are they not interested? They're not interested. They're liars. I want to make sure that we have as many people possible working in our workshop, passing the workshop safety induction, so... We can have that set up, but this is going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. It's a pleasure playing, and I look forward to seeing what Phoenix does for us next time. Have a great day, everybody.